lift your hands to Jesus all across this place and just sing to him. Thank him. Worship him right out loud. Come on, make a new song unto the Lord. Sing to him. Bless his holy name. Oh, there's no one like you, Jesus. 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 There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Come on, shout to God with a voice of triumph. Come on, you can shout a little bit louder. Come on, shout unto God today. Come on. Yeah. We love you. If you need a miracle tonight, we want to continue to worship. If you need a miracle, I want to invite you to come. Stage four cancers healed right here in these altars. Blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. He's the same. I said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals. He wants to heal you. He's certainly able to. Respond, come all the way up to the front. Come up to the stairs, pastors and ministers. Would you come? We're going to continue to worship God. Pray for these. Release the working of miracles, gifts of healing. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophetic utterance, be released. The gifts of the Spirit, all the gifts of the Spirit, I pray now, be released. Be in play right here tonight. Come on, just continue to worship. Hannah, would you lead us as we pray?
your power come all across this place. of the Lord. All I to do was stay still. All I did was pray. All I did was worship. Oh, all I did was
clap to God in the house tonight. Shout and clap to God like you just got every miracle you ever needed. Yeah! Come on, don't stop, don't stop. Give them praise. Take someone by the hand. All across this place, Pastor Karen going to lead us in prayer. You don't know the person you're connected to. Once again, take a moment. Introduce yourself. We're so glad you're here with Kings. Wednesday night, Holy Ghost night. Your life will never be the same after this service. God's going to touch you. Help He's already touched you. Those online, we're so glad that you're with us tonight. We are. We really are. No matter where you are, we're glad you're with us. Come on, we're going to lift our voice and pray for each other. Lift your voice. Pray for the person on the right, person on the left. Are you ready? Set? Let's pray. Come on, make incense. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness tonight. You're such an awesome God. And Lord, we ask tonight that you would come in an increasing measure. Lord, encountering us even in a new way this evening. Lord, I'm asking that the burdens and the cares even of the day pour off of people, would break off of people. Lord, that your word would go forth with power, touching people, changing people. We thank you for your yoke-destroying power in this place. God, I thank you for captives being set free. I thank you for healing people in their minds, in their bodies, in their emotions tonight. I thank you, God, that you are causing even the enemy to do an about-face and run off in seven directions. Lord, I thank you for breakthroughs. I thank you for breakthroughs. I want you to just let go of that person's hand and just lift your hands up to the Lord. The Lord told me that there's people in this place tonight that there has been, you, you just think this battle that you're going through right now, this intensity is, is just some, you know, there's a grief, there's sorrow, there's just a circumstance that's just so difficult right now. And the Lord just told me there is a supernatural uh, just attack upon that situation. And he's coming tonight. And he's that thing is being broken off even right now. In Jesus' name, a supernatural breakthrough, a breaking off of every bit of demonic power, every demonic attack now. In Jesus' name. And I thank you even for the testimonies Lord, of these things being broken off tonight, they're broken now in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. Just give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Shout a praise. You're great. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. The walls of Jericho are falling down. Come on. Hey, hey. That's right. Over your family, over your business. Come on. Over your finances. Hey, over your emotions. Hey, come on. Break through. Break through tonight. We pray for rain. All over the state. Let the clouds be filled. And let it drop rain. Put out the fires. Not only the rain in the natural, but we thank you for the rain in the spirit. And in the time of rain, as Zechariah said, we ask for rain. In Jesus' name, amen. Take three minutes. There'll be a clock on the screen so you can keep track. Say hi to somebody. Welcome to Kings. We're so glad you're here. Greetings to our online congregation. Once again, we are so blessed that you're able to be with us through the camera, whatever mode, wherever you're watching, YouTube, Facebook Live, the web stream, or in the future, podcasts. God bless you. You've come to the right place. Transformation awaits you tonight. Don't go far. Stick around. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to Kings.
Well, good evening and welcome to Kings Alaska. If you could make your way back to your seats, that would be awesome. As we get ready to have an amazing time on our Holy Ghost service on Wednesday night. Come on. Well, like I said, my name is Minister David. I have the honor and privilege of leading our youth and media ministers here at King's. I want to greet our first-time guests. If it's your first time here tonight, here at King's Alaska, we, there's a special way we would like to greet you tonight. If there is a card in front of you, in the seat in front of you, if you could fill one of those Connect cards and drop it off at our Connect desk, we would love to give you a special gift from us to you just for showing up tonight. We do have some first-time guests that we just do want to honor. We do have Auntie Roe, the Santos family from Maui who just moved to Alaska. Come on, let's give them a hand tonight. They are part of our our family, or Ohana in Maui, and they have just recently moved to Alaska. They're out back in the corner. Come on, stand up right there. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> we have a special way of greeting. We want to give you a great big God bless you. Can you help me, church? Yes. One, two, three. God bless you. And welcome to Kings Alaska. There's so many awesome and great things going on here at Kings. First off, we have Discover Track. If it's your first time or maybe your fifth or even tenth time that you're here at our Kings Chapel, Alaska, but you have never been to our Discover Track, you're going to want to sign up. It happens the first four Sundays of every month at 1015 upstairs in the fireside room. You're like, what's this cover track? Well, you can find out who we are, what we believe, maybe God's plan for you and God's purpose for you. So sign up at the, at the what is that called? The Connect Desk for more information. Also, we take an annual dip net trip. How many guys love going down and fishing? Come on. We actually were just up north and our some of our with our youth and they caught some fish. It was awesome. We got to fry it up more like that. But we got to fry it up. It was amazing. But don't miss our annual church dip net trip July 20th. I'm sorry, July 18th to the 20th. If you need more information, please see the Connect Desk. Also, if you'd like to become a former member of KC or KC Worldwide, you would want to sign up for our Belong Class membership. All right, so it's Friday, July 26th at 6.30 p.m. You can also sign up at the Connect Desk for that. And why you need to sign up? Because we want to feed you. So please sign up for that. We also have our youth camps happening July 22nd to the 26th. If you have a 7th to 12th grader, you're going to want to have them sign up for this camp. It's going to be a mind-blowing, spirit-filled life-changing experience for them. I can promise you that. Our our speakers are Pastor Aaron and Kenu Anderson who are going to plant a church in California for us. You're going to want to have them sign up. And if you don't have a student, please, please, please allow a student to be sponsored to come and be a part of what God is doing in our youth group. Also, we have our kids camp July 29th to August 2nd, full rush with James Reynolds from our church in Branson, Missouri. He is a right, he, I knew him all his life. He's a great guy. You're going to want to have your kids sign up for that. And again, if you don't have kids or maybe you just want to be a blessing to a child, please sponsor a kid today. Pastor Daniel. Pastor Aaron. Come on, put your hands together for Minister David. <clears throat> We're getting ready to have a good night, amen? Anytime you start here and go up, it's a great night. God is here. I get the opportunity tonight to lead us in our worship and our giving, and um, a story comes to mind tonight. I just want to encourage you guys that God is on the throne and he's faithful. He's always faithful, Okay. Um, I spent the last 12 years of my life in a little town called Cape Girardeau in southeast Missouri. It's a farm town. Uh, there's fields everywhere. More often than not, we would follow a combine into church. And uh, my son came to me one night, and uh, he wanted to plant a garden in our backyard. Our, guard was perfect, our, our yard was perfectly manif manicured. Grass did not need a garden, but he thought that we did. <clears throat> 
And so he came and said, yeah, I think we could put it right here on this half of the backyard, which means we have to dig up the grass, which is a chore. If you've ever dug up grass, it's not the most fun thing in the world to do. But he looked at me with, like, desperation, like, come on, Dad, let's do this. And anytime your son comes and says, I want to do something with you, Dad, you say, okay, I'm in, regardless. And halfway through, I was like, what am I thinking? This is crazy. Missouri's hot, it's humid, it's not the best place to do outside work. Kind of like last week here. Amen. This is good weather to do work outside. And so we worked all day, cutting out the grass, tilling the ground, fertilizing the soil, getting it ready. We took a a ride to Walmart. Because that was the only place I knew to plant a garden from. Not really a great farmer. We got bags of seeds of all kinds of different vegetables. We've got corn. We had everything you could possibly imagine, watermelon. We got it all. We got packs of seeds. We came home way too much. Way too much. But we began to open stuff and pour it in the ground. Everywhere. Everywhere. It was awesome. We got to a place in the night where I had to bring out spotlights. It, believe it or not, it gets dark in other places of the world. <clears throat> and I got to a place where the, light, the sun was going down and I had to get spotlights out. And I remember the look on my son's face when he's like, man, this is awesome. We had tomato, uh, whatever they're called, wire cages, putting them up around the plants. We had, we had stuff everywhere. And he just looked at me and, and said, man, this is awesome. We didn't plant that garden with the expectation that nothing was coming up. We didn't spend all day fertilizing the soil and tilling it and going to purchase seed to put in a ground that was going to do nothing. We knew with everything in ourselves that every seed that went into that ground was going to grow something in the near future. How much more does our God know that the seed that we plant Listen, I, I want to give you a quote, and I always want you to remember this. You do not give to Kings Alaska. You give through Kings Alaska. Never forget that. People get hung up on where their tithe and their offering is going. You don't give to this church. You give through it. And on the other side, if I would have taken that seed and just thrown it out in the backyard and gave it to my backyard, it would have produced nothing. But the soil was tilled and it was ready for seed. Let me tell you something. I've been here for about six weeks. The soil has been tilled. It has been fertilized and it is ready for a harvest. And your job tonight is to say, I want to put my seed in that soil. I don't give to this church. I give through it because I want to see what comes up on the other side. Man, I'm... Better stop, Pastor Daniel. He's like, come on. No, I'm just kidding. Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. The Lord will command. Everybody say command. Command. The blessing on you in your storehouse and in all to which you set your hand. He will bless you in the land which the Lord God has given you. God has given this church Alaska. He's tilled the spiritual ground. And the harvest is ready. You have an opportunity to be a part of populating heaven through your tithe and your offering. There's a building being built that not just souls will be saved so we can fill up chairs, but souls will be saved so we can fill up heaven. That's the soil that's being tilled. So tonight when you give, understand this. The soil is ripe. It's ready for a harvest. As you bring your seed, as you plant, there's many different ways to give. It'll be on the screen eventually. And when it is, you can write a check. You can use your credit cards. You can get on the app. We have, we have a building being built here. We have a campus in Bristol Bay and Eagle River. River? Eagle River. We have a campus that's getting ready to go in Northern California. God's on the move. You can either be a part of it or you could be left out. Where do you choose to throw your seed? Do you choose to throw it on the ground that hasn't been tilled? 
Or do you choose to throw it right here where you can reap a harvest? Ushers, will you come and help me tonight? If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. They're coming now. Listen, God is ready to bless you. He's commanded you to be blessed. That's what Deuteronomy said. He's commanded you to be blessed. And tonight you get the opportunity. The Bible says in Sam, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, that obedience is better than sacrifice. That when you obey what God says you should do, then you get to reap. It's an if-then promise, just what Pastor Daniel's been preaching. If we do what he's commanded, then we reap a harvest. Tonight, it's not, it's not an obligation, although it can be, and it is, because he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's an honor. It's an honor to bring our seed our tithe, and our offering to be a part of what God's doing in Alaska. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight that you're doing a new thing. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're an omnipresent God. You're everywhere at all times. And Father, I thank you that you already know, that you've already gone before us. Father, that you've already plowed the ground. Father, that we have an opportunity to put seed in the ground tonight to reap a harvest. Father, that you will bless your people. And Father, I thank you tonight that through the sowing of this seed, that Alaska will be saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, you can do a better clap than that. What was that? What was that? Just to uh, keep you on the uppity up, you might have noticed some people on stage tonight that were dancing a little crazy, and you're like, who are those people? Uh, those people are missionaries from Toronto, Canada, from Catch the Fire Ministries. And, and let me just say, uh, they invested pretty much their whole life savings to come here to Alaska to be a part of what God is doing. And so they're up in the youth tonight. They're sharing testimonies of what God has done in their life. But it is a privilege and an honor to host a generation that is hungry for the presence of God. And so when you see them around, when you see them here or there, don't look at them like they're a stranger. They're children of the Most High God, and they are part of this family. Amen? Awesome. Amen. Thank you. Just, just, flow. just flow a little bit. You know, I don't know if you are aware of uh, Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. Has anybody ever heard of Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship? Raise your hand high if you heard of Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. All right. So... Um, they are a, that church is, was an epicenter for revival in North America. And what happened is a man by the name, as I recall, uh, by the name of Randy Clark, who's preached here before, oh, it's probably been 12 years now, and did a healing conference in this building uh, with Northgate. They borrowed our building and people came from other churches and I was here for a few of those services, Randy Clark and Bill Johnson. I think the year after we went, how many remember those meetings? Years and years ago and then uh, over at the fairgrounds, they used Raven Hall. So Randy Clark got touched by revival and the fire god of Rodney Howard Brown, which is really the same place that, that our church was transformed in 1995. Let's just give you a little, little kind of revival history a little bit. Because um, it's important. Say, so why is it important? Well, it's just good to know your spiritual genealogy and, and to encourage you that what God did before, He can do again. What God did at other times, He can do right now. And so He went up to John Arnott's church in Toronto. And God broke out. And I don't know how long those meetings went for, but they went, as I understand it, week after week after week, where God poured out his spirit in an amazing way, not unlike he did in Hawaii in 95 and Lakeland, Florida in the early 90s, up here in Alaska, I think 1992. Is that about right, Edna? 92, 93, something like that. How many of you were part of the 92, 93 meetings? Yeah, that's why you're here. Because you're like, oh, the fire still burning. Hallelujah. Half the story is yet to have been told. God's going to do even greater things. And so they, uh, 
we hadn't planned on having them come, but uh, a friend of ours in Anchorage was a part of a, a church and things, his situation changed and his relationship with these folks in Canada at Air, Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, they were coming with this team and he was now part of a Baptist church. So all of that jumping and stuff doesn't work too good in a Baptist church. You know, they worship a little bit differently. And um, so he, he knew that we were crazy, <laughs> as, as it is, and said, do you, these are Holy Spirit people. These, these, these are, do you have any, can they, can you help? I said, where are they from? You know, carry the fire. That, isn't that Toronto? Yeah, it is. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on relationship and reputation. I would have never met them. Of course, we met them after. Thank you for your hosting them. And uh, just so blessed at what God is doing. You know, he's making deposits here that, that you might not be aware of. He's doing supernatural things in our midst. And I have a word from God to preach to you. I can't hardly wait. Stand up on your feet all across this place. Come on, just thrust your hands into the heavens and just worship him. Father, we thank you for your word. A lamp unto our feet, a light upon our path. You're amazing. We love you. Move in power tonight. Come on, just pray in the spirit. Yes. You give me a little piano and my monitor, please. Oh. How great and awesome is the Lord our God. A little bit more piano in my monitor, please. Thank you. That's it. Hannah, just play. It's all right to wait on the Lord. So we're going to do it just a little bit more. A little more. A little more. It's 8.03. There's nothing on Netflix. And if there was something, you could always watch it later. Most of you, most of us have eaten enough food already. Come on, just press in for a moment. It's true. Press in. Lord, it's our deep desire that you would have a place. Where will your resting place be? It's our deep desire that this would be that place. As we call this Holy Ghost night, we ask you, Holy Ghost, to come, to speak, to stir, to move, to have your way as my beloved friend has said, and I've heard hundreds of times, every man, every woman, every child be brought low and you be glorified tonight. Let your word run swiftly into the hearts of men and women and children. Let your finger come upon the fleshly tablets of our heart. Take out the heart of stone. Take out the heart of stone. Put in a heart of flesh. Stir us with the most holy of emotions by your spirit. Move us tonight by your word. Move us tonight by the same spirit, the resurrected, res resurrection spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from hand. Move tonight. We give you praise. 
Jesus' name. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Thank you. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites invaded the south of Ziklag, attacked Ziklag, and burned it with fire and had taken captive women and those who were there small and great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. Verse 3, so David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive when David and the people were there, they lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. I've been there. I don't know about you. You're dehydrated. There's a puddle on the floor and you're exhausted and you've got no more power to weep. Verse 5. David's two wives. All right, they've been taken captive. Verse 6. David. What are you guys laughing about? Okay, you see, because they know me. They know I can hardly pronounce anything that's complex in Scripture, so I just move over and say, like, Shondai. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. There you go. What's up? <laughs> you guys are crazy. You all are crazy, that's what. <laughs> They've been taken captive. I feel encouraged right now. <laughs> now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. David did what? Strengthened himself in the Lord. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, please bring the ephod to me. I want you to say that. Please bring the ephod to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he, notice it's capitalized, he answered, pursue, for you surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Father, move in power, Jesus' name, amen. I've preached from this text probably more than most text that I've ever preached from. It's a text that deeply encourages me, but I want to take it from a different, a different point. Over the past number of weeks, and especially over the past few days, have just had a supernatural... Listen, the walk that we have with the Lord should be supernatural. How many of you know that? It, it's a supernatural thing that you could be saved. It's a supernatural thing that you could be healed. Your walk with God, come on, it says in John, I believe it's 10 or 14. It's in the Bible, book of John, pretty sure. I could pronounce that, John. That my sheep know and hear my voice. So now you're, you're his sheep when you get born again. And so God has a voice. He has a way of speaking. God has a way of leading. Like when he led you to obey your wife, to come here that first time, and then how God cracked open and brought healing, and now you're pastoring a church. Like when he spoke to you. So how do I know his voice? You remember that voice where he said, you need to give your heart to you. I need to get right with God. You need to get right with God. And you gave your heart to Jesus. That was his voice. Still small voice supernatural release of God's leading over these past few days. And I, I can't help but recall and think back about the hand of God on my life and not just mine, this church, this, this group of churches, over 250 around the world. When, when my mom and I first started coming all those years ago, there was three. And um, our, our dear sister, Delyn, most likely online, hardly ever misses a service. She was, I think she grew up in the church. So she was here when there was just one. Shortly thereafter, God speaking, God stirring, God releasing faith. And now we're 235 churches all around the world and, and growing. The word of the Lord to us here at King's is precious to us. The leading of God's Holy Spirit, the leading of God to us is all the jelly donuts. What do you mean, jelly donuts? The, God's leading in our lives. We look to it. We count on it. We, it, it, it. If he doesn't lead us, then we're finished. This text, this text, I want to hone in on this ephod. 
David inquired of the Lord. He asked for the ephod. It was a mighty weapon in the hand of David. Oh, it wasn't a sword. It wasn't a javelin, a spear. It was one of the ways that God spoke to Israel. And so he inquired in the moment of grief, in the moment where he couldn't weep anymore, and, and his wives, whatever their names were, it's in the text, right. were lost, his children were lost. And they didn't, you know, the text says they didn't kill him, but they didn't know that. They really didn't know. And so now they want to kill him. They're, they're exhausted. They're grieving. They want to affix all the blame on David. And he calls for the one priest that's left because all of the other priests were killed. Because David lied, man after God's own heart. He lied, and as a result of his lying, Saul attributed the priest to being with him. Saul was crazy. God had taken his hand off of him. And he ended up killing all the priests except one. One priest escaped with this powerful weapon called the ephod. Studying this this afternoon and meditating on it. And there is no way that I can accurately break down for you exactly what the ephod is. I, uh, I had a pretty good grip until I started reading some new information. My wife got me Dr. Perry Stone's Hebrew Roots Bible for my birthday and uh, started the Old Testament. Yeah, I started reading some of that, and I thought, oh, no, 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 we need a whole lot more study here before we start busting out exactly what the ephod is. It's really uh, amazing. This morning we had some devotions with our youth interns and the text that we read was Exodus chapter 40 and Exodus 40, uh, you, you can go there and if you could put it up on the screen, are you able to do that? Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34 to 38, 34, thank you so much. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meaning for the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting. I just need to stop. You leave that scripture up. There are times in meetings when God's power comes so strong that Moses, Pastor Mo, can't minister anymore. Now, I don't know if you've been in meetings like that, but that's, that's, what, that's what changed our lives. It was the glory of the Lord that changed our lives. Now, I'm not going to so much preach on that. I'm going to preach on the leading of, of the Lord. But the leading of the Lord will always bring you to his glory and always bring about glory for his name. And so here they've built this tabernacle and the glory of the Lord fills the thing. And Moses, <laughs> he's not able to go in. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you showed up at church next Sunday, next Wednesday, and you go to go inside and you're like, whoa, whoa. What's going on in there? You know, I mean, it just like stops you, arrests you. You better not go in there. Wow. The glory of the Lord. Because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in their journey. So in other words, an indication that God had spoken and said, your camping trip is over, is when the cloud would lift. Listen, if you can get a hold of what I teach and preach to you tonight, your life will be forever changed because some of you are still camping out and there ain't no cloud. Hey! The children of Israel will go on from their journeys. Next verse. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all of their journeys. One of the keys to walking in power, fire, authority, and seeing God be released and flowing through your life, fulfilling your destiny, is knowing when the cloud moves or when the fire moves. And until the cloud or the fire move, don't go anywhere. But if it did move, you better pack your stuff. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, does the cloud move for you? I want to talk about the leading of the Lord. And I've preached lots of messages on it, but it is so, so strong in me tonight. So strong to 
to give you a glimpse from the book of Acts about the leading of the Lord, about how God leads. Now, I, I took some notes and put them in here. <laughs> and honestly, it's, it needs to be further developed. So what I will do is I will go through it to give you a view. And if there is need of correction in it, then uh, praise the Lord. Amen, Lord. Amen. Praise God. So as far as I understand it tonight, how many of you understood something and a couple years went by and you realized, oh, snap. <laughs> that ain't exactly how that is. <laughs> and I, you know, maybe I should just skip the whole section. No, it's good. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just share it with you. All right. Look at the ephod. Key verse, I want you to go there. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 30. And you shall put in the breastplate of judgment the herb and right and the thumb in it. And they shall be <laughs> I just get really encouraged. Does anybody know what I'm talking? It's just like a wave of glory, joy just comes over you. All right. Uh, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel, over his heart before the Lord continually. There is this breastplate uh, made of gold. Verse 16 seems to be square of that same chapter. And you can study this. And it has, uh, there, all of the Old Testament is types and shadows of the greater things to come. So when you study these things, they all tie into New Testament reality and truth. So it's, it's incredibly deep. There are these 12 stones on the breastplate, and each tribe had a stone that represented, and as I was reading, I was reading this study Bible from Dr. Perry Stone, who I texted today, he sends his love. In fact, actually, when I got my Bible, I opened it up, and I'm like, oh, Oh, Dr. Perry Stone Bible, thank you. Happy birthday. And I look, and it's Dr. Perry Stone on my phone. I thought, hmm, praise the Lord. <laughs> I think God was speaking. I'm going to talk to you how God leads. You say, what was he saying? I can't tell you. Some stuff you need to keep private. Amen. And if you don't understand it, you should just pray through. Anyway, we're going to get there. So this Urim and Thummimim, what are they? But that's a good question. And there are, and this is where, honestly, I'll try to roll it out for you very simply. But they just don't really know. And so they, they, they guess, and there's lots of discussion about it. In Exodus 28, 16, it says it's to be a square, a span long and a span wide and folded double. So there appears to be like this pocket. And some think that this pocket behind the urm and the thurman, it, it was used to give direction. So we do know that urim comes from the word ar, a-r-a-r, and that means to curse, or guess what that would also mean? No. Now, long ago, in fact, I just saw one last, last summer, I saw one in some store up in the north of us. It was one of those eight balls. And you would shake it and, and then look and it would float up. It's witchcraft, okay? So don't be trying to get your decision from some cursed eight ball. You're like, oh, snap, I just looked at that today. You just repent. <laughs> repent, all right? We don't make decisions that way anymore. Right. Amen. Does she love me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't make decisions by the plunk method either. You look, 
Judas hung himself. Turn again. Go and do likewise. I knew it. That's not, everybody say no. So Urim, it's no way, the plunk method is no way to lead, be led by the Lord. So Urim mean, can be no or to be cursed. Thermamim comes from tamam, T-A-M-A-M, which is to be perfect or equals yes. So he inquires of the Lord David with this ephod, do I pursue? And he, he gets a yes. And he gets a word, pursue, overtake, and, and recover, recover all. If, however, you read Exodus 28, 30, that is in the, in the Septuagint. How many of you know what the Septuagint is? Raise your hand if you know what the Septuagint is. All right. If you don't know what the Septuagint is, then you need to come to the new members class, which is coming up as Minister David uh, promoted it. I think it's, is it this coming? July 26th. Thank you, administrative people. July 26th. Now, the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Scriptures. Say that with me. It's the Greek translation. It was done about 200 years before Christ, okay? So if you look at the Septuagint, it says this of that verse. You shall put upon the oracle of judgment the Urim and the Thummim. And in that definition, it seems that they might be jewels, Josephus, an ancient Jewish historian, wrote that the first century that the Urim and the Thurman would light up supernaturally. I've read in other places that they would hold the breastplate out before the lamp of the Lord, and one of the jewels, who goes first? Judah. And it would grow, it would glow, and they would like this supernatural indication of what they should do, would, would light up, but only seen by the right person. Look at this, 1 uh, Samuel 28, 6, only see, it's only seen by the right person, which is fascinating to me. This is Saul, he inquires of the Lord, 1 Samuel 28, 6, do you have that one? It's good to go there, because he inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him, by dreams or by the Urim Bor or by prophets. In other words, God was done talking to his dull self. Because he had disobeyed, it was over. Oh, I'm gonna go there because I just feel it. I, I, my my son was telling me uh, he was asking me, "Hey, Dad, you know, I've just noticed that sometimes there's people that just serve the Lord and then they they turn away from the Lord and then they come back and then they turn away from the Lord and they come back and they turn away from the Lord. Do, do you? How do you think God? What do you think God feels about that? Well, we dialogued and said it, it hurts him for sure. He says, is there ever a time when God's like done with them? Because they're like, they don't. I said, well, turn to Romans. Some, some of you, this is for someone. This is not in the notes. We have gone off the reservation. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> and in Romans, it talks about what, what some would describe as a reprobate mind, being turned over to reprobate mind. In other words, they know the truth, they refuse to live it, and they deny him over and over and over and over. Finally, the Lord's like, then, then go ahead. And, and you say, well, who's reprobate? We don't know. That's not up for us to figure out who's re We know who acts like they're reprobate. Maybe. Is there ever a time that the Lord's done? Yeah. When is that? No clue. I feel in my own life, I got, to, I got to a place long, long ago, long ago, got right to the edge, right to the edge of that. And I was like, uh, the, end of the, the, the other side of that, it's over. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. How many of you know when you know that you know that you know that's it? Fear of God came on me. So this, these perhaps jewels would light up seen by the right person, but for, for Saul, the jig was up for him. God directed David by the ephod. God directed the children of Israel by the ephod, by the cloud, by the, by the fire. Well, how, how, do, how does God direct us? Well, it's not, by, it's not by some glowing stones. He said, is it by the cloud or by the fire? In application, certainly one of the ways. And so I want to take tonight, briefly, to look at five different ways that God leads you. 
that God leads me, that God leads us five ways right out of the book of Acts. And through it, I'm going to sow into some of the supernatural stories and ways that God has led us here in this church because it's absolutely supernatural. The fact that we're standing here in this building with that other building soon to be completed in Jesus' name with shouts of grace, grace. And all the different things that are happening are completely beyond any human ability or charisma or a man or a gifting comes by the supernatural power of God. And it is God's will for you, sir, ma'am, brothers, sisters, for you to walk in the power of God, for you to stay in the cloud, for you to stay in the fire, for you to fulfill God's plan. But the only way that's going to happen is if you're led by God and, I, and he speaks to you, but it's not just he that gives you the whole plan. Many times you get A and B and then you get moving. Come on, someone say get moving. I mean, you, if you want A through Z, that ain't happening. As you well know, you get A, B, and then you get to B, and then you shondai a little bit. You may pray, and, and then he's like, okay, here's B.5. Or B.1, and then here's B.2, and then B.3. And as you labor that out for whatever period of time, then bam, he gives you C, D, E. We, we want it all at the same time, but that is not how it works. You've got to be faithful in the little things so you can be ruler over much and that's not just in this age that's in the age to come so if you can't be faithful with what he gave you now what in god's name do you think he's actually going to hook you up with the big bean burrito from heaven oh yes the enchilada he gave it no he ain't going to give it all to you because you can't even be trusted with b.2 raise your hands just have a praise break for a second How does God direct us today? How does, you know, God spoke to me. Okay, well, what, what does that mean, actually? I heard from the Lord. Awesome. How many of you ever heard somebody say that? First of all, there's no argument when somebody says God said. Because then it's like, you know, game over. How does God speak to us? Jesus spoke audibly to the Apostle Paul two times, twice. That's found in Acts chapter 9 and verse 4 when he's on the road to Damascus and he fell to the ground and he heard a voice. What did he hear? A voice. What kind of voice? He heard God's voice. It's the voice of the Lord. Saul, Saul, that's before he was changed into Paul. Some say he got so touched by God and knocked the S off, put a P on, and his name was Paul from that point. Is that not right? You missed a great place to laugh or something. It's Saul is his Hebrew name. Paul is his Greek name. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And we go on to find out that it's, who, who are you? He says, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Saul, later to become Paul, was going around persecuting the church. Don't you speak against any church, ever. Now, if it's apostate and it's got jacked up doctrine and there's things that are wrong, that's different. That needs to be exposed. But Baptist full gospel, half gospel, I don't, whatever denomination, if, as long as they don't destroy the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, then that you bless it and you speak life over them. Amen? Because it's his body. So God spoke to him. Jesus spoke audibly to the Apostle Paul in Acts 23, 11. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul. <laughs> wow. The Lord stood by Paul and said, be of good cheer. So this is the Lord speaking to Paul. So can Jesus speak audibly? Oh, yes, he can. Come on, someone say, yes, he can. Now, maybe he's spoken audibly to you. Maybe he hasn't, but he speaks. I do believe the Lord has spoken audibly to me. There's a couple different situations, but one of the main ones was in the receiving of our property, and I've told it so many times before. It's a Monday. Monday for pastors is like fall on your face day. It's amazing how many like texts and problems I try to get on Monday. <laughs> Call another day. Unless someone's dead or really, you know, I mean, God forbid. Amen. Just call Pastor Karen. Her number is 907-841. Amen. A -M I'm, I'm just kidding, sort of. It was a Monday, and I, you know, I don't feel like doing anything spiritual. In fact, it is spiritual, like do laundry, chill, take a nap. I take Monday's like my day off, and it's a very spiritual thing to chill. Somebody say amen. amen. 
So, I mean, we went to see a movie and we're driving back. And many of you heard this story many, many, many times, so I won't belabor it. But the family wanted to go to the church property, the old church property. It hadn't been there in 10 plus years. We roll onto the property. I get out of the truck. The kids get out with me. I feel God's presence, which is another way that he leads. We'll get there. God's, I feel God's presence, like his presence. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, you can, you, you, he's here. I might get out, and I'm like, whoa, the presence of the Lord. Move to the barn, which is where we had our first church. I walk in, it's decimated, windows blown out, curses everywhere, people been sleeping in it and doing all kinds of evil in there. I walk in with my kids, it's up to our calves, basically, and some of you saw it. And I stood where the pulpit used to be, and I was overwhelmed that we actually had a church because we had gone through so much in the early years of my arriving here. And I lifted my hands, and I was like, man, it's amazing we actually have a church. Never mind, we're looking for property. It's amazing. And I lifted my hands, and I said, Lord, thank you so much. I didn't even get to finish what I was saying, and the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, I'm giving you the property back. And it freaked me out. It was so loud, I think it might have been audible, but my children don't remember hearing it. But how many of you know God could speak audibly to you and everybody else could not hear it? I don't know for sure. I guess I'll get to heaven. It's really irrelevant. God spoke to me, whether it was on the, in, the, in my heart or whether it was audible, but God does speak audibly. God does speak audibly. And he said over Jesus, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased as he affirmed him as he was baptized on the Jordan, in the Jordan River. And the Holy Spirit came like a dove and lighted on him when he was led out. And the word, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You see the Father speaking. You see the Son and you see the Holy Spirit. The three in one God. Hallelujah. So God speaks audibly. And for me, I said to the kids, I said to my children, I said, man, God just spoke to me. He said he's giving us the property back. I think my immediate response was, that's totally impossible. But I had enough in me didn't say, don't, don't say what's impossible. Don't say things are impossible. When God says it's possible, it's, it's impossible for you. It's possible for God. God speaks audibly. And some of you know the rest of the story. We've got a building on it now, a total miracle. We didn't have two nickels to rub together to get the property. Bought it and made three million overnight. Okay, I'm gonna encourage myself since you guys are like, okay. <laughs> Woo, that's amazing. That's amazing. Pretty good investment for the church. Now worth nine. Someone said it's not worth nine, it's worth seven. Okay, now worth seven. Without the building. God spoke through angels, right in your notes. Acts chapter 10 and verse three. One day about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God. Do you know that God still uses angels to speak? They're messengers. My wife and I were dialoguing about angels and different angelic visitations that we've had. Yeah, they're, they're terrifying. The one distinct one that comes to mind was, I think it was just before your dad died. And just before, was it just after? Okay, just after your dad died, but just before we lost about 100 people in the church in one week. And we're going to go through great, you know, Difficulty. We're going to go through some stuff. We're sleeping, as I recall. We're woken up. We both wake up in the night, and it's like uh, God's in the room. And I remember it it's not, wasn't just his presence. It was different. And I, we, we were so freaked out. Pastor Karen, what, what, what did you do? I hid under the cover. <laughs> She's like, shut up, And I, my response was I got out of bed. And I'm looking around, terrified. You know, like, yes, Lord. And I, I didn't see, you know, people, I, 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 see, I see angels from time to time. I used to see demons all the time until Dr. Joseph Martin changed my channel. I only see demons when I need to now. And he said, no, you're going to see angels now. And so I saw the outline of an angelic being. And I couldn't quite see his face, but clear as clear could be and absolutely terrifying. And as I stood there, he spoke to me and said, 
You're going to go through difficulty and difficult times. And, and then it was just like, boom. And the sense was, but I got you. And we're going to go right through it. And it put faith in us. We just lied there like, that was an angel. That was an angel. That was an angel. That was an angel. Man. Was, you know, we kind of lift it and then you can kind of talk. You know what I mean? He said, well, I've never had that happen. Listen, God wants to lead you. He'll speak to you. He'll say to angels. He'll speak to you through the word. We're going to look at some of these things. These are just two ways. You need the leading of God in your life. If you try to fulfill the plan of God in your own life, in your flesh, it'll never happen. I think I'm using my hands more. In Acts 27, angel of the Lord to whom I belong, wow, verse 23, came and stood by me and spoke. Wow. In Acts 8, 26, Philip is told by an angel of the Lord to go south onto the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. He's in the midst of revival. I felt like this when I was in Kauai with Pastor Vince and so many other great leaders, God was pouring out a spirit there. We had 16 acres, 16, right? 16 acres, we were gonna build a building and it was amazing. And I, I went for a run and I came to a street which is significant called I, A-I, just like in the book of Joshua. And I was arrested by what I know now to be an angel and then I had an open vision. Open visions are another way in which, and that was the call, the clear call to, to Alaska. God will speak. He will speak through angels. You know, there's a whole, there's a whole humanistic movement that's afraid of being like hyper spiritual or considered a nut job. Can I tell you what a nut job is? You know what a nut job is? A nut job is the super supernatural God who parted the Red Sea. Come on, he, he healed the leper. He, he, he raised the dead. And he took your sin and mine supernaturally. You believe all that by faith, but then you believe that he can't do supernatural things in your life today. I'm going to tell you something. It's totally, totally unscriptural to have a walk that doesn't have supernatural power in it. You don't, when you read the book of Acts, you see fire, you see power, you see God speaking, you see angels, you see signs, you see wonders. You don't see some dead pulled up by the roots, belief when people are just miserable and baptized in lemon juice and got no victory, got no power, got no authority, there's no money, there's no breakthrough. You don't see that in the book of Acts. You see a church that's vibrant and vibed by the Holy Ghost who moves forward as God speaks with angels showing up and opening prison doors. Hey, that's what he does. That's who God is. It's weird to not have supernatural things in your life. And it's very strange, very strange indeed, to have a church that doesn't have that. To me. For me, that's odd. God spoke through trances and visions. I don't think I've had a trance. Not long ago, I might have been in one. My wife's like, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, but I don't think it was a trance from the Lord. <laughs> Daniel, or she'll say to Hannah, your father can't hear you right now. <laughs> dad, 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 your father can't hear you right now, which usually kind of snaps me out of it. Daniel, Daniel, and then she'll say, pastor, I'll be, yes. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I've had a trance before, maybe you have. I have had visions, but God does speak through trances and visions. Maria Woodsworth Etter, anybody ever heard of her? Maria Woodsworth Etter had a trance, I believe it was in Chicago, if I have that right. And uh, she went into a trance and froze on a pulpit, preaching, frozen for three days. Okay, three days. Didn't move, like didn't blink. And if I recall correctly, she had an encounter with the Lord and went to heaven. When she came back, the Lord busted that place open with signs and wonders and miracles. Listen, a trance. I don't, I don't know. God can speak through trances and through visions. And you see in Scripture, Acts 10, 
Peter has a vision of a sheep filled with animals. You're not supposed to eat if you're a Jew. Let's read this. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Go to the next verse. Oh, God bless you. They pre- oh, there we go. Thank you. He saw heaven open to something like a large sheep being let down to the earth in its four corners. Let's do 12. It came to all kinds. We're going to go to 13 too. It came to all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. The voice told him. A voice told him. A what? A voice. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Let, let, let's just stop. While he's having a vision and a voice speaks to him, a vision happens over at Cornelius' house and they send two messengers because of the vision. That's what you call double vision. (laughs) Same time. Now, I can't tell you how many times where the Lord has spoken to me something. I mean, and then it would speak to somebody else. I mean, the, the Perry Stone thing today, that's not an accident. I mean, you, you get your Bible from Dr. Perry Stone and boom, text. Who could put that together? You know, many times God does things like that. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of went somewhere for a second. He does things like that to speak to you, to confirm things. He'll say, it, surely, surely wasn't a lady named Shirley that followed the Lord. And verily, verily, wasn't her sister. He's saying, hey, I, I, pay attention. I, 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 pay attention. That's what he's saying. And so when you get doubles like that and triples, you know, it just confirms. God spoke through his spirit. God spoke through his spirit. What do you, what do you mean by that? Oh, I should, I should, I should say uh, Acts 16, 9, the vision of the Macedonian man. You know, an interesting thing happened today before we go to God spoke through his spirit. Interesting thing happened today. We were praying. We had like, we had a little rush of the Holy Ghost in our camp before we broke camp today. We just camped out for two days with the youth interns and spent time in prayer and seeking the Lord and studying the word and then hiking and praying and listening to junior hires talk a lot. And Uh, my son, after the, after the prayer meeting and time of uh, ministry, he says, I, I had a vision. I said, well, what is it? He said, I saw a bone on the ground. And, you know, like a bone. Kind of like a chicken bone, you know, like a bone. I'm like, yeah. And he says, and there was no marrow in it. No, no marrow. And I saw the Lord begin to fill the bone with marrow. He says, Dad, do you think that means everything? I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm just telling you, when you're prayed up and you're spending time in the presence, the wind blows and God talks to you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? They saw a bone and began to fill with marrow. Marrow makes the blood. And I began to think about the bones that were left on top of the soil, a picture of the cursed army of Israel and how God talked to the prophet and he said, walk through the valley, a very full, full of dry bones. Prophesy to the bones. Prophesy to the bones. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I saw the bones come together. I mean, I had, all, I had like 15 sermons blowing up in my heart and, and, then I, and then I saw the application for it. It was for healing for someone's blood. And we went out and gave the word and prayed and I believe that he got supernaturally healed. Listen, that is the way the kingdom of God operates. That's how it happens. Some of you, God's speaking to you all the time, but you dismiss it. Like, oh, psh, that's crazy. You know, reason is a guillotine for your faith. And you can reason away things. God spoke through his spirit. Word of knowledge, Ananias and Sapphira. I think that's a word of knowledge. I'm not, I'm not sure. How many of you know that story? Acts 5. They give an offering to the Lord. They sell a... Well, Barnabas sells a piece of land, brings all the money, sets it at the feet of the, of the apostles. And then Ananias and Sapphira seem to conspire together. They sell a piece of property and say, they what? They say they gave all of it to, to the church, but they only gave a portion. And the idea is that it seems like they're trying to get great recognition for their giving, 
but they were lying, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. And so then Peter gets what I think is a word of knowledge. I don't know what else to call it. It's like, hey, did you give everything there, Ananias? Uh huh. <laughs> and he drops dead, and the youth ministry come and they bury him. And then Sapphira comes in and says, "So you and your husband?" So I guess she doesn't know. She's out. She's out. She's been shopping. She comes back with uh, some pita bread and hummus. She comes back. And she's like, oh, hey, guys, praise the Lord. What's going on? Put your groceries away. What's going on? It's like a prayer meeting. Pretty somber. Really. And he thunders. I don't know. So fire Did you and your husband? Uh-huh. We gave everything. You died of the Holy Spirit. And the youth ministry came and buried her. Youth ministry can be very, very fruitful. was the word of knowledge. You know, what's crazy is that the church grew. The church grew through the death of two lying congregants. That's not the Old Testament. That's the New... That... Read my white lips. That's the New Testament. Some of you think you can lie to God and everything's okay. It's not okay to lie to God. He Liars go to the Mormon church. No. Pastor Aaron told me to say that. <laughs> Liars go to hell. I am sorry. It's the leadership that are liars in the Mormon church. And really what it is, is deception. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, Woo, glad I came to church on a Wednesday night. Praise God, God is talking. He might not be able to pronounce those those wives' names, but he's sure down on the Mormons tonight. <laughs> Pastor Karen's number is 907-841. I remember years ago, word of knowledge, God speaking through word of knowledge. Years ago, I was living on the island of Molokai, pastoring there. And um, my mom's like, no stories about me. She's here. We have to behave ourselves. Pastor Karen is just entered into the back of the sanctuary. <laughs> a dear friend of ours who, who hosted our first life group, we were life group leaders, actually assistants in their home before we became life group leaders. And he was flying a King Air for the church. We would rent a King Air. How many of you know what a King Air is? It's a twin, uh, the turboprop, I think. And it was a nice plane, a red one, I remember. And uh, he flew that King Air for us, and we would go from there to Honolulu and do different ministries around the Hawaiian Islands. I hadn't seen him. His name was Don. He's now gone on to be with the Lord. Hadn't seen him in, like, the longest time. And he lands the plane. We're there at the airport, and I see Don, and there's a gate keeping me out from seeing my friend who who I want to wrap my arms around. I hadn't seen him in the longest time, and I'm literally... My heart is leaping with expectation to see my brother in the Lord. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, just a deep love for him and so grateful for him. And there's this keypad on the gate. And there he is, and he waves to me. I'm like, Lord. And I look at the gate, and I just see the numbers. You know, three, four, five, two, whatever. I forget what the numbers were. And I just, they like lit up. I, I pressed him, and the gate opened. I was like, come on. And I just ran in, and he comes out of the plane, and we hugged each other. And I said, man, I, I, the Lord just gave me the code to the gate. And I went in where you're not supposed to go unless you're like authorized airport personnel. How many of you know you might be blocked by man, but God's got the key for you? Come on, somebody say amen. God knows how to get you into places if you're led by him to them that are led by the Spirit of God or the sons of God. Are there any sons of God in the house of the Lord tonight? God's going to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to minister to you. Words of knowledge. He said, well, I don't really operate that. Are you going to come give me some skin? Come on, brother. What's up? Huh? Word of knowledge. Everybody say the word of knowledge. An inner word. In Acts 8, 29, if you could put that up, the Spirit told Philip, the what? The Spirit, that's capital S, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told Philip. What does that look like? I think that's an inner word. Sometimes we expect the Lord to speak to us one way. But he doesn't speak. In fact, I've found this. If you're used to him speaking the same way all the time, 
He's just going to speak somewhere different so you can just make sure to know that he's multifaceted. And he wants you to press in and seek him. As I've gotten older I, and in the Lord, I've found that there's certain, there's certain things about my walk with him that are consistent in the way that he speaks to me. But then he's always bringing something new, some new dimension. You know, at that same airport, talking about the inner word. Now, some of you, some of you know this story. Most of you don't. Pastor Alex, who was with us for about seven years, was our worship leader here. And uh, he's gone on to help there in Maui and doing a phenomenal job. And if you're online, we love you. God bless you. And uh, he left and went over there. We're, great, we're glad for him obeying the Lord. His father was killed in an airplane crash when he, I think he was 16, something like that. Well, his father came as a friend of mine, and he landed on the island of Molokai in the same place that, 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 that um, King Air landed in his new private plane that had been flying for about six weeks. And he said, come on, well, let's fly over Molokai. And, uh, and Pastor Harold was with us. He picked Pastor Harold up from the big island, and, and uh, he was already in the plane. And we were going to fly over Molokai and intercede and pray and ask God to show us the high places in the spirit. We were going to fly on an intercessory flight around the island of Molokai. I will never forget going to the airplane. He said, come on, let's get in. Everybody's, everybody's in. I'm a ride. I'm a co-pilot. I go to get in, and I'm, I'm, I'm like stopped, like arrested. And I, I'm, it freaked me out, like, whoa. And then just like real heavy fear of the Lord comes on me. And I realized, uh, maybe I'm not supposed to be on the plane. I'm like, Lord, you, is it all right? I, I always ask God if I should be on the plane. As I'm getting on the plane, and even before, I'm constantly like, Lord, I lay hands on the plane when I walk in. Listen, I, I wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for the word of the Lord. I'm talking about God speaking. God speaks. I wouldn't be married to this beautiful woman. I wouldn't have these amazing children. I wouldn't be your pastor. I wouldn't be saved. I'd be 10 feet under the ground somewhere. But God is a speaking God, and he leads. And so as I was stopped by getting on the plane, I, I hesitated and prayed. I said, Lord. And he said, you can get on the plane. I said, Okay. But it was like, whoa. I got on the plane. We flew around Molokai. We landed. I got off the plane. It was a great trip. One week later to the day, he got caught in some kind of weird wind thing and just drove him straight in the ground and died. Listen, if you'll be sensitive to God's voice, some of you are oblivious. You, 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 you hear the voice of another regularly. Listen for God's voice. Listen for the inner, the inner voice, the working of the Lord. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and tell you so many stories. God wants to lead you. Come on, lift your hands to heaven all across this place. Say, lead me, Lord. Lead me. Lead me, Lord. Another way that God speaks is through the discerning of spirits. This is just out of the book of Acts. You can do a whole study on this. The discerning of spirits. In Acts 13, 9, this guy named Bar-Jesus, can we put that up? Thank you. And Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus, which is also Bar-Jesus, and said, you're a child of the devil. <laughs> That's some good preaching right there. <laughs> and an enemy of everything that's right. You're full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. You will never stop. Well, pardon me. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? And then what happens? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. And you're going to be blind for a time. I mean, you want to talk about authority? Listen, when God speaks to you, you've been given authority. You take that word and you can split hell wide open with it, if I could just say it that way. You, you've been, when God speaks to you and you have discernment, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to quote my mama again. She says, son, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, acts like a duck, it's a duck. Amen. What does that mean? It means whatever you want it to mean. Because sometimes things come our way, and it, it, might not have, it might have a nice wrapper, maybe, but it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't acting. Yeah. 
acting right. It's not, it's not talking right. I mean, listen, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. The Bible talks about that. You think you're going to come to church? Listen, I hope you locked your car. If you didn't lock your car, lock it now. Are you serious? Yeah. We've got people from all walks of life, fresh out of the pen, some are heading in. The rich, the poor, the naked, the blind, the halt, the withered. We got air. We got a whole gamut here. And online. Should you lock your car at church? You, if you come to this church, you better lock your car. I thought there was Christians who go to that church. Yeah. I will tell you that we are equipped with the rod and the staff, and we're happy to use it. Amen. If there's anyone here to fleece the sheep, Vito Sarducci will soon be at your home. It's the ministry of the wood. Discerning of spirits. God speaks in Acts 16, 18. Turn there. Oh. Pastor Karen. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul becoming so annoyed. You know, being annoyed, you can be annoyed in the Holy Ghost and someone's like, you know, that's right. How many of you have ever been annoyed in the Spirit? You're like, it's just bugging me right now. Yeah, it's one of the ways that God gives discernment. Did you know that? Forget it, I'm gonna go over here. It's one of the ways that God gives discernment. Paul being, Paul became so annoyed. I, I, another version says, greatly annoyed. Greatly annoyed. And he turned around and said, first of all, what this, what this girl is doing, she's, they're affirming the gospel. Can you back up one verse? I think it's verse 17. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way of salvation. Is that true, yes or no? It is true. So the devil, the devil uses truth, but it was this mocking spirit that he had discernment, and it was, he became so annoyed, next verse, Oh, she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul becoming annoyed. Thank you. He turned around and said to the spirit, small s, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, come out. My voice cracked. I got to try that again. In the name of Jesus, come out. I command you, come out of her. And she was set free. God speaks, God leads your discernment. Through a prophetic word, we're moving right along. Through what? Through a prophetic word. You know, one of the things that happened just, uh, just on our drive back was I was surprised. You know, we, uh, we're going to do a thing in California, and we're excited about that. And um, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but... I didn't have much of a burden for California. I just didn't. Listen, God can lead you through a burden, and he has. He does. He leads us that way. It's another way that God provides vision. He gives you a burden, and you're like, man, you can't get it off your heart. You can't get it off your mind, and you're praying. You wake up. You're dreaming. I mean, it's just kind of like, then all of a sudden, you know, it's just everywhere you look, God confirming, God speaking, and his burden. So I didn't have a burden for California. You know what I had a burden for? I had a burden for you. Because you are a champion. You and your wife are champions. And when I found out that you were going to plant a church, I just wanted to come alongside and be a help to be a dream releaser. So I had a deep love for you and your family. I was moved by that. And the truth is, we plant church anywhere. I don't care. Because I got a burden for you. And God tied our hearts together years ago. But then on the way back, as we were talking, I got touched by him. Some California angel came and touched me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, it's just all of a sudden, it's like, whoa. Let's hit California. I mean, it just started stirring in me. Why is that? It just is the way it is. Come on, God, God speaks. God, God leads. Can you say amen? It's a prophetic, prophetic word is one of the ways that God leads. We have so many over this house. I have so many over my own life, over my children, over my wife. How many of you got a prophetic word you're believing for? You're believing to come to pass. You wage a good warfare with it. It's one of the ways that God leads. I've shared this story before. Can you come to the piano, please? It's 9 o'clock. Again, whatever you want to watch on Netflix will still be there when you get home. We were going through a narrow place, and without giving you all the details, it had 
it had many things tied to it that would be a fulfillment of other prophetic words. And the plan was that we were going to go to California. This is 20 years ago, plus, 20-something years ago. And we had a plan and an invitation to go to California, church. The whole thing was just lined up. It was amazing. Didn't feel 100% right, but it was mostly good, and I figured the Lord would bless it. And I'm standing in the back of a sanctuary, I think on a Wednesday night. Maybe it was, a, it was a Saturday night. And I couldn't wait for the preacher to stop preaching because we had Super Sunday. I had to get up at 4 in the morning or whatever it was, 4.30. Drive down, prayer meeting at 5. And then go through a very intense schedule there, which we loved and were very grateful for. But you know, you're going to preach long on Saturday night. I'm going to feel led to just, I wasn't running the service. I was, a, I was a leader in the church. Pretty much my responsibilities were done. So I was like, fade. You know what I mean? So I was going to fade. Oh, you guys never did that, I'm sure. But I'm about to fade. And the, this guy from the back says, Daniel. And he points to me. And he says, you've got plans to go to California, which no one knew. And he rushes at me from the front of the church, rushes at me, I was by the sound booth, rushes at me, pins me up against the wall, lays hands on me, and prophesies, you're not supposed to leave. If you leave this place, it'll be great destruction. And man, he took apart my entire plan with the prophetic word. And I, I was weeping for the disappointment of what I wanted to have fulfilled. The timing was wrong, and I was being fooled. And because of the heart ties and an immaturity in my own life, I was taking some of those prophetic words, mixing it with a soul desire, which is a good, it was a good desire. I'm not talking about like going out and destroying your life. I'm talking about good things. There's good and there's great. And the, you know, good is the enemy of, gr of great. Great is God. God's plan is great. And you try to get the cart before the horse, you're going to have a come apart, a high speed one. Find yourself up on a root wad as they say in Missouri. Everybody say root wad. Yeah, you don't want to be in one of those. This prophetic word saved me. Acts 13, 2, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate for us Barnabas and Saul. In Acts 21, 10, Agabus and Philip, Philip's house, they take Paul's belt and they, they prophesy about how he's going to be bound Preparing Paul for the hard times that was going to come prophetically. All through his trip, the Apostle Paul get these prophetic words that prepared him to go through challenging times. Over and over, I'm amazed at the Word of God. Over and over. And some of you are a part of those meetings, and I, I won't preach much longer, but just give me about five minutes and I'll land this thing. Dr. Morocco called me, and they had some South American prophet, and I never heard of him, and I still can't remember his name. Gustavo Paez. So the first thing, the first thing he says to Dr. Morocco when he sees him is, you have someone on your staff by the name of Bracken. Okay, well, that's a pretty unusual name, and uh, yeah, that's my last name. And Dr. Morocco's like, yeah, yeah, he's one of my pastors. Something happens and distraction takes place. And, you know, he goes, oh, well, good, you know. And nice to meet you. And so he calls to tell me. He knew your name. He called your name. He, he knew your name. I said, that's awesome. What did he say? He goes, I don't know. He never gave me the word. I said, but come on. Come on, doctor. Give me the word. What's the word? I don't know. I'll, I'll ask him. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if he knows my name, he must have something to say. I mean, that whole night goes by. I don't even think anything happens that night. It's the following night. That he prophesied, and, he, and he's, you can hear it. It's, it's recorded. We should, we should put those together, if we can, in the media department. and Kind of splice those, and we'll blame for you. He's preaching. He says, Bracken, Alaska, revival. I mean, how do you do that? They don't even know I'm pastor up here. I never met him in my life. How is that? It's a prophetic word. Lift your hands to heaven. The Lord is leading you. He's guiding you. He's directing you by His Spirit, by His Word, through the inner voice, by the angel.
angel of the Lord. He speaks and shatters the cedars of Lebanon. His voice is a sound of many waters. Beloved, He's chosen you. He's chosen me. He's chosen us to bear forth fruit and fruit that remains. We are His precious people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amazing to me that He would choose the greatest message of all time, of any time, of all eternity and entrust it to you. And entrust it to me. We live so far beneath our God-given, blood-bought right as sons and daughters of God. Far beneath. God spoke through counsel. I'm back in the notes and I'm almost done. God spoke through counsel. What do you mean? There's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. I don't ever make major decisions on my own. Ever. Ever? Never. What do you mean, never? I mean, we never make a major decision on our own. We pray. And we look for the, we look for the wind to blow, if I could just say it that way. I mean, God will use creation. That's not even in here. God will use creation. I've had, I've had birds speak to me. Look, if he can use a donkey, he said, that's not scriptural, the bird. Oh, shut up. If he can use a donkey, he can use a bird. I mean, he knows when a sparrow, how many of you know he knows sparrows? He knows when one fall, he knows every hair on your head and the lack thereof. Right? Right? Am I right? So can he use a bird? I was riding a bike as a, as a, uh, uh, a tour guide. And I don't know what, I was 20, five, six, seven years old. I forget it, they all blend it was a long time ago. I was going into a deep depression. I knew the Lord. I was living in my mother's house, which is cool now as a millennial, but it wasn't cool then. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a car. I had a bicycle that I rode to get back and forth from work, and then I rode a bike for a living. It just, you know, in my mind, I had bigger plans. You know, here I am. <laughs> and I, and, and I, just, I just work myself into like this frenzy of poor me. I'm like, oh man, I'm 25 some, some years old, living in my mother's house. These stupid people, I'm driving down a mountain, a bunch of tourists, they can't even ride their bikes. You know? <laughs> And then and, and anger turns to like hurt. And then hurt goes to like deep level disappointment. And I start bawling. And I'm crying on my bike. God, Lord, what the heck? This is lame. <laughs> and I, I'm really, my heart is breaking. And I, I begin to hear, and I've, some of you heard the story, but it's just true. This is, God, God speaks. God leads. He leads. Come on, say he's leading me. He's leading me. He's trying to get through to you. In this message, to help you. Because he's got great things for you to do. So there I am, riding my bike. And there, there were all these 13 bicycles lighting in a row down a volcano. It's a nice road, you know. It's a paved road that goes back and forth. Let's run. I'm riding my bike. And I start hearing. And I'm, you know, you're going 15 plus miles an hour. 17, 15, as high as 20. And I keep hearing it. In actual, in actual fact, it sounded very close to that. And it, the Spirit of God starts touching me. I'm like, Where, what, what's going on? Because it's in my ear. And so I, I start looking like, Where's, is there a bird? I look and there's a bird flying right next to me. 
I'm like, oh, that's just beautiful. That's never happened before. And yeah. And the Holy Spirit comes on me like fire. And as God is my witness, this is what happened. As you would get an interpretation of a tongue, I got the interpretation of a bird. And he said, oh, Daniel, I love you. I've got such a wonderful plan, but you can't see it just yet. Keep keeping on. It's going to be okay. I love you, son. I've got you. I've got you. I was like, yes. <laughs> Come on, God is a speaking God. I said God's a speaking God. He's a speaking God. He knows where you are. He knows your frame. He knows you're rising up. He knows you're setting down. God, God's got you. He's got you. He's changing things. The Lord says, my hand is upon you even on this night. And I am removing some of the limitations even in your own thinking. And I am going to speak to you with clarity. And you will know. You will know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Not only your calling, but direction. And you will not second guess yourself any more, says the Lord. Lift your hands to heaven. I don't know how we got from counsel to a bird. <laughs> Lift your hands all across this place. The one who called you is faithful. He will perform and perfect every single thing concerning you. I am causing you to will and act according to my good purpose, says the Lord. You are going to hear my voice in a fresh way all across this place and for every heart that's filled with faith to receive it. You're going to hear my voice as if this is the way. Walk ye in it. And you won't be taunted or dissuaded. You will know that you know that you know. I will perform my wonders through you to bring in the lost, to heal the sick, to set those that are bound at liberty. Through you, through your life, I've chosen you. John 15, I've appointed you, I've selected you to bear forth fruit and fruit that remains. I'm leading you. I said five minutes, but I went over. But what a great word. Hey. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to live in ambiguity. You don't have to live in... in in, in a place of, of dryness. You don't have to stay in the desert. Don't stay in the desert. Move through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't pitch your tent there. Press in, in conclusion. Getting the word. Getting his leading. Seek him. Press in. Pray. Ask him. Talk to him. Seek him. David sought the Lord. Walk holy. Number two, I'm almost done. I'm landing the plane. Walk holy. Now, if you're living some half-jacked-up, half-hearted life, and you think that you're going to be able to hear God's voice, let me just tell you, He's trying to speak to you. Then at the same time, you've opened the door to the enemy, who's also whispering to you. Then you have a, a mixture of, of soulish issues that will also be blended in, and you will be totally confused. And then many times, if you're, listen, if your light's not right, then you've got to get right with God. 
you got to get right with them. you got to live holy. And he's the one that helps us. Stay. He's the one that makes us holy, but then you have to, that's an imputed righteousness. A righteousness that is yours because of what Jesus did on the cross. You, you don't earn it. It's by, by grace. You, you, you receive it by, by faith. By faith. By confident assurance of what you cannot see. You receive the gift of righteousness. That we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's given to you by what Jesus has done. And then when you receive that. That's why you can boldly come before His throne of grace and worship and, and thank Him. And with a conscience that's clean because He paid the price for you. And then that works out in your life. Sanctification, we call it. Where you learn to live holy because He's holy and He lives on the inside of you and He, he, he gives you a mandate to live holy. And if you're not living right, you've got, come on, you, you got to get right. If you're struggling with things, confess them. James, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. You can be healed. You don't have to stay in bondage. Everybody say, walk holy. And lastly, walk holy. And lastly, last, I've gone long, but man, I'm stirred. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not only can be, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands all across this place. that you get in prayer and you're like, God, please speak to me. And he's like, how about you listen? 
because God has no problem speaking. The times I've felt crickets in heaven, you just go back to the last thing he told you to do and make sure you did it and examine your life. And we all stumble and mess up in different ways. But if you'll constantly submit yourself before the Lord and to ask him to lead you, to guide you, to direct you, he will speak. For me, for me, one of the hardest decisions of my life was, was to get married again. Now, this is for somebody. And I'm not going to go much longer. I was married before and I got divorced, so let that encourage you, those who've been through divorce or are perhaps going through it now. And when I found Christ, or should I say he found me, and I vacillated back and forth for a while, but eventually got set on fire, 95, 96. And then he became so, so dear to me that I didn't want to share him with anybody, and I realized, wait a second, I don't ever have to have another girlfriend. I don't ever have to get married. I don't need anything. All I, I'm going to be like the Apostle Paul. I'm going to rage a fire all around the earth. I'm going I'm to serve you with everything I got night and day. You are everything, God. When that became solidified in my life, giving in the short version, it is then that the Lord spoke to me, and he spoke so supernaturally to me to marry this woman right here. I walked out of a meeting, and I was going to go get in my, my car. I had a car. The Lord was elevating me. I came away from the bike. He was blessing me. It wasn't much of a car, but it did work, and it was legal. I was going to get in my car and go home, and I would, I, would, I would dance with the Lord when I got home. I'd put on music, and I would... I don't mean like, I mean like, we would, we would like waltz. I mean, I would sit and he would hold me and I would cry and he would heal me. And I mean, it was just like this incredible thing. I walk out of a meeting. I'm like, oh God, I love you. Can't wait. We just go home. I keep worshiping. And he just says, son, turn around and look at your bride. And it was, I don't, I don't know if it was audible, but it was loud. How many of you know what I mean? I turn around and I have an open vision. I mean, like like clouds and blue sky and this woman in this amazingly beautiful woman in this wedding dress walking towards me with the power of God resting all over me. And she got closer and closer and closer and the closer she got, the more power of God was on me, closer and closer to the point where I didn't think I was going to be able to stand or take it anymore. I didn't know what was going to happen. And it dissipated. And Karen is standing this close to me right in, in, you know, live. And she looks up at me and she says, are you okay? I said, oh, uh, no. And then she walked off. She walked off. So I don't know if you've ever seen her. She puts her hand out like that. She walks off. I got in my car. I got in my car and I drove about a half a mile and had to pull over because I was crying so hard. I wept on the side of the road to the cloud of the presence of the Lord in my car. And I just said, God, that's awesome. But I don't want to mess it up. I don't trust myself. Can you just really, you got you to gotta give it to me in the word. I want a prophet to call me out. And, and I want my mother to give me the, the engagement ring for my family. But I'm not going to tell her. And honestly, that would all have been a miracle. Everything I looked in scripture was marriage, 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 everywhere. Cindy Jacobs, little known prophet, you might have heard of her. She calls me out and says, Daniel, the Lord has shown you your wife. I'm like, oh my gosh. Ah! She was sitting next to me by then. And then in the recording of our second worship album called Consuming Fire, on the front row, worshiping, my mother on my one side, Karen on my left. We're worshiping, and mom just goes flat out on her face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have it on video, so I can show you later. Anyway, she goes, she goes down, and she gets up, and she has a fist like this, and she hits me. Take it. Take it. I'm like, take what? Like, she drops the ring in my hand. And I closed it. I went, that's it then. That's it. 
shortly thereafter, after I worshiped for a little bit, I turned and I asked her to marry me. She said, remarkably, yes. I put the ring and it fit on her finger. God led us that way. He will lead you. He will lead you. He will show you. He will speak to you in all kinds of ways. Come on, lift your hands to heaven all across this place. Come on, say, Lord, lead me. I belong to you. Lord, lead me. Oh, God, help me to hear your voice. Help me to know your ways. Lead me, God, through your voice, through angels, through visions, through trances. Lead me, God, by the discerning of spirit of the word of knowledge. Lead us, God. Lead us through counsel and supernatural visitation of every kind. God, do it. We want to hear your voice and obey. Lord, we thank you that you have led us thus this far. And we say as Moses said, Lord, we won't leave this place without your glory. Continue to reveal. Continue to show us. Continue to reveal to us what we're to do. And I thank you that you are bringing many sons and daughters to glory. You're bringing many, many from all around the world to hear the word of the Lord. To be saved, to be healed, to be led by your spirit. Come on, shout to God with a voice of triumph. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Hey, yes, come on. These are the greatest days to be alive. The greatest days to be alive. These are the greatest days to be alive. These are the greatest days. Yeah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're not right with God. Get right with him right now. You want to receive Jesus for the first time or make a recommitment all across this place, those online. Pray this prayer. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place, to rise again from the grave for me. Forgive me of all of my sin and come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. Let me pray for you and then I'll close. Holy Spirit, I pray, fill and touch each and every one right now. That we would be sensitive, ever so sensitive to your voice. Release faith for those who are on the precipice of making decisions that have at a place in the road of their life, release faith to trust you and your leading. Confirm it. Speak, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Say that. Here I am. Send me. Say it one more time. Here I am. Send me. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. May the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, lift up his countenance towards you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.